What's up, everybody? Hi, how's it going? My name's Marley. I'm a newly minted fourth year, which is nuts. It feels surreal to be saying that. And I'm now in that wonderful little like eye of the storm where step two is over and it's not quite crunch time for like sending in residency applications yet. And in this video, I'm spilling all the beans on how I studied for the USMLE step two CK exam, how it was actually taking it, how it all panned out. And if I had to go back and do it all over again, what I might do differently, what I would do differently. I'll be covering a lot of ground. So stick with me for those who are unfamiliar Familiar with step two CK. It is now officially pretty much replaced step one as the numerical standard that residencies use as a benchmark for application evaluation now that step one is pass fail. And step one is a whole other beast. I actually made a video about it when I took it last year and I'll link that video up above if you want to go in and watch that first before this step two one. Basically step two is now the big one. It is also more like clinical information heavy, you know, compared to step one, which is more basic sciences heavy. And while there are a bunch of resources that could be considered gold standard or very high yield for step one studying, there really aren't as many that would be considered top tier for step two CK studying. The top ones are Anki and practice questions, specifically UWorld and to a lesser extent NBMEs because NBMEs are basically old step questions. So some of them are outdated, but they're still very useful for getting kind of in the mind of test makers and seeing what matters to them, which topics do they care about. Some also use like first aid for step two, step two secrets and bits and pieces from Pathoma, Boards and Beyond, Sketchy and Physio as needed if you need a, like a refresher on some specific topics. I used Anki, UWorld, and a little bit of Physio for bioethics and public health review in the week leading up to taking the actual test. But studying for step two actually started officially for me last year, right when third year rotation started. So in that year leading up to my two week dedicated step to studying time, I started reviewing and at least trying to keep up on material from throughout third year because it would have been just too much to try to review everything from all of my rotations in just the two weeks. That would have just been unrealistic. Don't mind me, I'm just thirsty. <laughs> Did I have my cup, by the way? Look, it's going. I don't know if you can see, but cool. Like, it's just grabby. Anyway, so like I described in all my previous rotation recap videos, I prioritized Anki for whatever rotation I was on at the time. And in addition to that, I would try to review my Anki cards from previous rotations as much as possible. I missed a bunch of days and it was definitely not perfect. Sometimes I got behind, but even though I was definitely not perfect at all at reviewing, it helped so much come step two dedicated studying time. It made that time period way less stressful because not everything was completely rusty. It was like riding a bike on most of the material instead of me having to like relearn everything completely all over again. Similar deal with UWorld. I used it throughout pretty much all of my rotations and I did the questions that were specific to the rotation that I was on. So by the time I came around to step two dedicated, I had already gone through UWorld in its entirety once. I got my first pass done. I had to push it to be able to make that because there's a lot of questions in there, but that was my goal was to finish UWorld, get a first pass done before step two dedicated rolled around. Then during dedicated, I did one, well, between zero and two blocks of UWorld per day for those two weeks of dedicated. I didn't do any UWorld on the days that I took practice tests, which I'll talk about in a second because I was just questioned out. My brain was fried after taking a practice test and reviewing it. So maybe I do two blocks the next day. And those UWorld blocks, cause you can pick and choose which subjects and categories you want to test yourself on. Sometimes I would mix them up and just do a big mishmash like it would be on step two, or I would pick and choose whatever other topic I was struggling with. In addition to those questions during step two dedicated, I did at least, I had to do at least 500 up to a thousand Anki cards a day. And it sucked so and those cards were from the Zonky Onking Step 2 specific deck. And that deck is my baby. I've been updating, modifying, making that deck my own since M1 year. So it's this really fine tuned machine for me at this point. If anyone happens to want my deck, don't blame you if you don't, because it is definitely geared towards me, my style of like how I think, and I made up my own mnemonics that are stupid, but like, whatever. If it helps somebody, it helps somebody. I'm gonna put a link in the description box below to the Anki package that is gonna be in a Google Drive. So it's gonna be a Google Drive link in the description box. You'll be able to open it, download the Anki deck, and then you'll be able to you know, open it in your own Anki and you'll have my cards. And that'll be the exact deck that I used for studying for step two. Now for practice tests, 
here's my breakdown, okay? Because some of the practice tests out there are better than others, for sure, okay? Don't let anyone tell you otherwise. The higher the test number, like NBME 10 versus 13 versus eight, right? The higher the test number, the more recently it has come out. It's supposed to be more reflective of what the current forms of the actual tests might look like. But if you try to do like five, like one every day for a week, you're gonna burn yourself out, so you gotta space them. So two months before test day, I took my baseline NBME. I took NBME nine. Now I'm gonna talk about later why I would not do this one first, but this is what I did. I took that as a baseline and did better than expected on it. Wasn't until later that I realized it probably, you know, overestimated a little bit, whatever, we'll get into that later. But I took nine first, two months out. And then the next week, I wasn't planning on this one, but the next week Amboss came out with their like free step two practice test. So that was my second kind of practice test. And I actually did worse on the Amboss than I did on my baseline. So that had me really scared. So then two weeks after the Amboss one, I took the UWorld self-assessment, the first one, UWSA one. And that one is supposed to over predict your score, supposedly, a little by a few points. And I did about the same on that as I did on the Amboss one. So I am freaking out, right? I like my baseline was here and then my next one was here. And then the next one was about the same, just like a smidge lower and it was supposed to over predict. So I was like, I'm actually here. I'm, I know nothing and what I'm doing for studying isn't working. I was overthinking and so scared about everything. My whole study strategy, I was like questioning my entire life at this point. <laughs> But then comes the next one. This is where I started seeing kind of the upswing here. Because about a week and a half after I took UWSA one, I took NBME eight. And on that one, I did better, better than baseline. And then two weeks after that, I took NBME 12 and I did a little bit better. By the time I took NBME 12, that was the very start of step two dedicated study time for me. So I'm like, okay, let's see some results. Like I need to pick things up here. So I took, you know, eight and then 12 and then 11 and then UWSA two and then the free 120. UWSA2 and the free 120, the reason I took them last was because they were supposed to be the most predictive of your actual step two score. And from NBME8 on, I saw improvements, you know, a few points every time. But by the time I got to the free 120, which I took about three or four days before the actual exam, I felt pretty comfortable with where I was testing at. So you know how I said the free 120 and the UWSA2 were supposed to be the most predictive? of your actual step two score? They were actually. That was pretty awesome. The free 120 and the UWSA two were two and three points off respectively from my actual score. So if you're kind of wondering how to structure your practice test schedule, I would from personal experience now recommend definitely slotting the UWSA two and the free 120 as your last two that you take for like a decent indicator of where you might be at on the real thing. And last thing I'll say about these practice tests and, you know, predicting scores and whatever, since I'm a good little neurotic med student, I scoured Reddit and found this website where you can plug in the scores that you get on practice tests. I think you have to have at least three data points in there. So once you take two, I think three tests, you can put your scores in and it'll, you know, kind of put those together in whatever little algorithm and spit out an estimated real step two score, plus or minus a certain amount of points. The estimate for me was almost dead on. It was only one point off from my actual score. I'll put that website, the link to it, in the description box below as well. Now, if you've watched my step one study plan video, you might be wondering like, hey, where is Cram Fighter? What, what, where did Cram Fighter go? That was like the main dish, the, the, the piece de resistance, the, I'm sure I butchered that, the gorilla glue for your whole plan, um, yes. Yes, you would be right, it was. I loved Cram Fighter for step one, specifically because there were so many resources that you know, step were high yield for step one. There's a lot to keep track of, so many videos and like pages to read. And then you get behind and the cram fighter had that like catch up mode where you, you can re-spread out, you know, everything else that you need to do. It was worth the money for me to do that because I had, you know, Pathoma, Boards and Beyond, Sketchy, First Aid, uh, I don't even can't remember the other ones. And so, and Anki, of course, so all this stuff, it was just much easier to throw it in a cram fighter and have it spit out exactly what I need to do. And I would just go down the list and check them off. And you might be able to guess that I didn't need cram fighter for step two studying because I really only used Anki, UWorld, and then practice tests thrown in to gauge progress. And then a little bit of physio, public health and bio stats sprinkled in at the end in a couple of days leading up to test day. And test day, by the way, oh my God, I have to tell you the story about what happened on my test day because I almost just passed away. I was so stressed out because you plan for this day, okay? I need a drink, hold on one second. 
this was a huge day, right? So I already get like crappy sleep the night before, right? Cause I'm stressing. I mean, this, this really counts. This number counts. And I was a little late to actually scheduling my test date. So I had to go to a further away location for my testing center. The worst part though, Okay, so I roll up to this testing center. I get in there. I'm like braced. I'm ready to go. I check in and the lady at the desk goes, honey, did you get my voicemail from a few days ago? And I'm like, voicemail? I'm like choking. My stomach drops. I'm like starting to sweat on the spot. And I'm like, no, I, I'm i so sorry. I didn't, I didn't see a voicemail or hear a voicemail from you. I'm like fumbling with my phone like an idiot. No idea what she's talking about. And she goes, we usually have people that are taking step tests come in at 7 instead of 9 a.m just because it's such a long test. And I'm thinking, oh my gosh, if I had to reschedule this when I'm already here, I hauled butt all the way out here and I'm braced for this and I'm ready for this today. And I have to reschedule and go through this like stress again, I swear. And she must've just seen the panic coming because she goes, oh no, 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 honey, it's okay, it's okay. Uh, let's check you in, we'll get you started, no worries. I'm like, oh. I'm like, Sharon, you couldn't have just led with that, that it's fine? Like, why'd you freak me out with saying that? You know, we should've come and stuff. like, oh. It was so unnecessary. I thought I was gonna pop an aneurysm. So then I had to do some real deep breathing and channel some serious inner peace <laughs> before going into this test. <laughs> Luckily, the rest of the day was uneventful. Just a brutal marathon of questions that never seemed to end, but no other scares like that. So that's good. I was shocked though by how many OB questions I had. Very little peds, but a lot of OB and then not very much biostats, but a ton of those like giant chart questions where pretty much the whole chart in sort of abbreviated form, but really it's like a whole chart is laid out. And then you have the question for your answer, you're like scrolling up and down because it's too big. They can't just fit it onto one screen length. So you're having to like go back and forth. And this is a lot to read through given the fact that you're supposed to get through these questions like you know, in less than 90 seconds, right? Overall, I came out of it feeling pretty neutral. I mean, there it was definitely difficult, definitely difficult, but there were also a surprising number of what seemed like gimmies, and then you like second guess yourself and kind of freak yourself out. Never second guess yourself, you just roll. Just roll, roll, roll through them. Most of them I thought were pretty fair, honestly. I mean, there were some like out of left field, definitely, but I just think in my head, like to keep morale high, I just think, oh, those are the experimental questions that are, you know, cause there's about an, a, a block's worth of experimental questions that will be thrown out and not factored into your score. So every time I come across a super hard one, I just think, oh, experimental, it's good. And then I move on. <laughs> so that keeps me from getting too psyched out. It's psychological warfare in there. Okay, beat them at their own game. So I did this plan and all of this work actually pay off. I got the email that my score was available. By the way, that email comes at about 11 a.m. Eastern time for non-IMGs. I got that email in the middle of a very long patient visit. So I sat on it for about an hour. <laughs> I'm physically nauseous, I'm so nervous because a low score here could just crush dreams, you know? Then I'm finally able to check it and I'm like shaking, clicking around. My goal score was over 255 because I'm hoping to apply to a fairly competitive specialty, which I will reveal and do a fun video on later down the road, but not today. And I beat my goal, hallelujah. Now, just because things worked out this time, okay? That doesn't mean that I wouldn't do anything differently looking back. First, I wanna check my voicemails from Sharon. <laughs> really though, so my practice test kind of schedule. I would have done that differently. Let me tell you what I would have done. I would have swapped out NBME 9 for NBME 10 and NBME 8 for NBME 13. I had already unfortunately taken eight and nine, which are older, less representative of probably the real thing now, before I really knew any better. And I didn't really want to or have time to squeeze in 10 and 13 towards the end. Other than that, I would have treated studying a little bit more like a nine to five job than the kind of all consuming thing that I let it become. Because it was a rough couple of weeks. Like that was absolutely brutal. I told you like between 500 and 1000 Anki cards a day, maybe a practice test, if not, then one to two blocks of you world. I'll squeeze into one. I mean, it was a, it was a lot, you know? And then reviewing everything and making sure that, you know, if I needed to, if I was struggling with a certain topic, you go and review that and like target that specific thing. And I would find myself going down rabbit holes of stuff like, oh, what if I forget this? What if I forget this? What if I forget this? I gotta study this. And it's like, no, you've gotta set healthy boundaries around this stuff or it's gonna just take over your life. And I literally had no life for those two weeks. I was just here in the house or in a coffee shop 
studying, studying, studying. My poor husband was like, where did you go? <laughs> and I'm like, I am just like this. I hated it. Even though it worked out, I still just was miserable and so continuously stressed for those two weeks. The thing is when you're in it, you're like, oh, this is necessary. This is necessary. Like I need to do this, but you, you're not realizing how much it's taking out of you, right? Like it really, you're in just high alert, high cortisol, high adrenaline, whatever for that long. I really wasn't getting great sleep because of this. I managed, but it wasn't great and I hated it. And so I would have, if I could go back, kind of set better boundaries around that, just really been like, okay, I'm gonna get done everything I can possibly get done between nine and five. And then I have to give myself the night off. Do something normal. Be done with saying, shut the computer, don't touch Anki on my phone and just chill in the evenings and actually wind down and get some decent sleep. So that would be a major thing that I would go back and redo. If you've been keeping up on studying throughout the year, throughout your rotations, what shows up on step two, if you don't already know it and you have you know, a short step two dedicated time like I did, if you don't already know it or have a decent idea of like how to work through it and uh, reason your way through these questions, a couple extra hours at night over the course of two weeks is not gonna make a big dent, a big difference. Give yourself a little bit of grace, give yourself a little bit of time to be a regular human and you won't have to crash for three straight days, four straight days like I did after taking that test. I was literally a zombie because I had to completely, like my system just went, okay, finally you're gonna let us chill? Great, full shutdown. I was, not a person for like four days after that test. I was so knocked out and so tired and my body was finally forcing it itself to rest because I needed it so bad. But don't be like me, be a normal person, study hard, but give yourself time to actually rest and decompress at the end of a long study day. Please, 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 please. Okay, rant over. And another thing before I wrap up here. So step two dedicated, obviously, like I just described, it's rough for pretty much everybody. Those are long days studying. I don't know about you guys, but music really helps me stay focused and motivated during those longest, toughest days. So for those who like to study with like music in the background to help them focus like me, I added links to my two favorite Spotify playlists for studying in the description box below. So check them out if that is something you're interested in. If you have any questions about why I chose to do things the way that I did them, or if you have your own things to add, or if you just wanna say hi, go comment below. And while you're down there, hit the thumbs up button, subscribe if you haven't already. That helps me know that this content is helpful and it helps this information get out to other med students who are struggling with how to approach step two. Thanks so, so much, everyone. Love you all. Hope you have an awesome rest of your day and catch you next time.